Okay, so this tutorial is going to go over some of the basic features of the planar surface so you can actually generate the geometry for the screens here. Uh, so I've started out by just drawing a rectangle, um, so four polylines forming this um, enclosed area uh, in the construction plane of the top view. So if we look at this, we can see that this is planar. In the actual lithographic views, we can select that. Okay. Um, it's important to note when we select this that this is closed. Um, each one, of, if we have these exploded, uh, each one of these is now open, and they can still form a planar surface. But uh, you'll run into problems if you are not maintaining closed quality surfaces or closed curves while you're working on this. So go ahead and rejoin that together. So the way that the um, create a planar surface from curve works uh, is that you're gonna you need these planar curves in order to do this. So if we click that. We can see that it, this little plus sign appeared, uh, and if we go turn on our shaded viewport, we can see that now we have uh, this uh, planar surface already set up. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right there. Uh, and the way that we're going to actually start to edit geometry out for our screen is we need to make sure that we actually have uh, some closed geometries in here. So uh, if we take this, this is a closed curve here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer so we can see that. Make that one like red. And then under the properties. So you can see that this is uh, a closed curve. And I can confirm that just because something looks like it is closed doesn't mean that it necessarily is. So we can see this clearly. Um, so we need to do select closed curve. Okay. And you'll note that this got selected and also the boundary of our uh, surface got selected with that. So that's really good news. What that means is that we have some closed curve here. Uh, because it's closed, there's a defined interior and a defined exterior. So if we want to split something, uh, we can go through and actually split that geometry. So now when I come in here, I can use the split tool and select and split that. Okay. And then I can delete out the, the insert here. If you do not have uh, closed geometry for whatever reason, say so you have something like that, and that's quite obviously not closed. I'm going to go to split this. It'll say splits failed or object may not intersect or intersections may not split the object. Right? So this is basically demonstrating, making clear that this is not going to be a way that we can actually um, trim through the surface. And if you think about it, um, because in, from the sensibility of this being something that is actually split, um, we have to separate this into two distinct parts. And we haven't defined a distinct interior and a distinct exterior in order for that to work. Okay, when you guys are looking at this, some of you guys are inevitably going to have things that are overlapping on top of each other. And so while this sometimes will work, this is a really bad technique for you guys to go through this. Um, we can go and split, and if we select both of these, it'll split this into a couple of chunks uh, that'll still work. Uh, as you guys increase the level of complexity of your um, splits, though, if you have 10 or 15 different curves, 30 different curves involved in that. Uh, instead of actually running that operation, uh, it'll just air out and it'll give you a, uh, a clear sense of how to do that. If you have one of these guys that's open and you don't know why or what's going on, uh, I'd recommend doing them in small batches. Uh, so if we come in here and I'll just create a quick array of these. Uh, let's go six by Six by six, and we'll go with two by two. Okay, so we have a, an array, and we need these things not to touch. So three by three. Okay, and so we hit enter to accept, so it actually generates the curves there. So we can pull that away, and I'm going to go ahead and the, another, I'm going to create a surface in another way here, rectangular. I'm going to draw that rectangle. Again, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the ISO farms so you don't see those. And we can go ahead and then take this and split it. Okay. Whenever we get those nice thick edges, that means we can come in here and start to clear these guys out. Okay. Now, uh, if I've gone through and every my jump, as long as my geometry isn't all that complex, uh, the other thing I can do is I can start to create planar surfaces by actually just taking all a set of planar curves. And all of these curves have to be in the same plane 
Uh, so when I click create a planar curve from that, or surface, sorry, it'll actually automatically do all the trimming for us on that, okay? And so that goes back and forth as you guys go through this and develop the surface geometry. Um, if you're having trouble and it's erroring out, uh, I would suggest checking the curves on these and making sure that you don't have redundancies and extra curves overlapping. Uh, and I talked about in a previous tutorial rebuilding some of these things. Uh, if you've been offsetting or doing stuff like that, uh, you can rebuild the curves in here. So at some point you're going to end up with this being here. So I'll create something incredibly complex. So right now if I go to rebuild this curve here, it has 19 control points. If I offset this any distance, I take the offset curve and go to rebuild it. It now has 200 control points. So if you, yeah, obviously this scene is pretty obvious. That's going to very, very quickly compound uh, the complexity of the operations you guys are going to be performing. Um, so if you are doing that, uh, you can, however many your point count was, and I'll just this to something we can see. If we offset that, we can rebuild that geometry. Let's see, that's uh, around 20 was what we were talking about initially, and so you can see that that deformation is relatively maintained that. Um, you don't need to go in there to reduce it to that much. We might be able to increase it a little bit, but um, but not too significantly, and you'll get nicer qualities, and you're also going to be, we just cut down the, the amount of information in that particular curve uh, by about, what was it, uh, it went from 215 to 40, uh, so that's about 60%. Okay, 80%, 80%, you can do math. All right, and so uh, that'll be how you guys are actually gonna start to create this, okay? Uh, and when you guys actually go and take this to uh, the, uh, the laser cutter, you're gonna make sure that you are cutting out your curves and not your surface geometry, okay? Because if we do end up creating uh, a planar surface from this, when you send this to the laser cutter, if we haven't turned off these little isoforms here, show surface iso curves, um, it'll laser cut those curves for you, so it'll cut your piece into four pieces there. Uh, so that's a, an important thing to note as well. All right.